Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. I recently bought two watches for $99 each with very similar sets of specifications and identical Swiss quartz movements. The Phoebus Chinese micro brand, the Glycine Swiss watchmaking powerhouse. Unfortunately, I've only got one space in my collection. Let's flip the camera and get into today's Battle of the Beatles. In the blue corner, representing China, the Phoebus PX002. In the red corner, representing Switzerland, the Glycine Combat Sub Quartz. Just a word on the packaging. If we gave points out for packaging, Phoebus would do okay. Fairly nice little neat case, plenty of branding there. But the Glycine would take the packaging crown. A uh, very stylish inner and outer box. But of course, we don't give points for packaging because you don't carry the packaging around with you on your wrist every day. We only give points for the watch. So I'll keep this fairly brief. It is obviously fairly subjective, uh, but there you go. So let's start with brand. Now, a clear win for Glycine. Phoebus, brand new Chinese micro brand. They get a two. The only reason they don't get a one is uh, they've now got four watches available for sale. They're getting better with every watch and they're beginning to build up a little bit of a reputation and some happy owners. Now Glycine, controversial one here. They only get five out of ten. The problem I have with Glycine, they've got a couple of great models in their lineup. They've got the Airman and they've got the Combat Sub Automatic. But chances are, if you're not into watches, you're not really aware of who Glycine are. Uh, Longines, Omega, Rolex, you'll know who they are, but you won't really be able to spot a Glycine. And if you are into watches, chances are you'll know that Glycine were bought out by Invicta last year. So that's why it's got a five. Value. Now, same price. These were both $99, but I think the Phoebus gets a nine. Uh, Glycine gets a seven. Very similar in terms of specification. It's a Ronda Swiss Quartz uh, 515 uh, movement. In both of them, they've both got sapphire crystal, unidirectional bezels, 316L stainless steel. Uh, this one's a 40, this one's a 42, both got 22 mil lug widths. But for the price, the glycine came on either a choice of NATO strap or rubber, and the uh, Phoebus comes on this bracelet, and it's a really nice bracelet, solid end links, beautifully well machined, great level of finishing. So the Phoebus picks up an extra couple of points there. Now style, five each for this one. Phoebus is just a, um, a Rolex homage, but more than that, it's probably a Steinhardt Ocean 1 homage. Look elsewhere for more detailed videos about the rumours there. Zero character of its own and a little bit bland. It could do with a logo uh, more than just the name printed on the dial. Why it gets a five. Glycine, hmm, red and black. In theory, a nice colour combination, but it just doesn't work. The watch looks cheap. So five each there. Versatility. Now, this is a kind of negative category. I'm going to score them negatively. How many days out of 10 would the watch not match your outfit? I think that you can get away with a diver on a bracelet. Probably seven days out of 10, there'll just be some circumstances where your outfit is a little too dressy to cope with a diver, so it gets seven. Glycine, it's a bit of a polarizer, this one, with a PVD finish, black and red color scheme, so this will probably match your outfit about half of the time. Build quality. Now another win for the Phoebus here. This one is remarkable for $99. A very, very impressive watch for the money. Solid end links in this bracelet. Full stainless, screw down case back. Some nice laser etched features there. Really tough and durable feeling. 165 grams on the wrist. Glycine. If you've seen my review of this one, the bezel is an out and out shocker. It's almost bi-directional. Really doesn't give you much confidence with the watch when the bezel's rattling around like that. Following on from build quality then is durability. I think this Phoebus will give you um, a good few years of, of solid, reliable wear on the wrist. I'd be swapping out the end pins. I think the um, spring bars in these aren't amazing. That's somewhere, I, I would do that with all my new watches, unless you're getting a real top brand, I would be swapping out the spring bars for heavy duty ones. But I think this watch will be a, a tough and reliable everyday wear for all conditions. Uh, glycine, probably not so much. Again, screw down crown sapphire crystal, decent case, uh, but just worried about that bezel. It loses points therefore. So grand total, no surprise then, or perhaps a surprise, but no surprise. 
40 for the Phoebus, 33 for the Glycine. I think you're getting a great watch for your money if you don't mind having a no-brander on your wrist. And this, I've got to say, big disappointment. And this apparently is pre-Invicta stock, so Lord only knows uh, what's going to happen to Glycine. I'm sure their fanboys will be most upset uh, with some of the new models, which seem to be a little more garish as well. So there you have it, a surprise win for the Chinese micro brand. The Glycine, $99 of disappointment. This one will be going on eBay later on tonight. Thanks for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.